For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna to discuss his column titled Barriers Obstructing Realization of Human Rights, Respecting and Advancing Human Rights. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. So, Professor, why do you believe violence is so significant a feature in our country? And if it is as central uh, to human rights as you say, why is nonviolence so seldom discussed? Well, I grew up with um, the idea that to be rough and tough was very good. Unfortunately, I was not tough and rough, <laughs> so that I was not um, the ideal man. You know, the, the, the model of manhood that you have, not just amongst white, not just amongst Africans, colors and Indians, is of a big rugby player or someone who, who will give you a smack and, you ad- and people admire someone who can give someone else a smack. And that is, um, unfortunately, a culture of masculinity, which is has not disappeared. And it's found in, in um, a lot of features of our society. Uh, the idea of being gentle and kind is... Um, something that people don't aspire to. You know, there was a sort of a debate yesterday on Twitter about this Bester and uh, Dr. Nandipa, and people are saying, uh, why is it that they don't go for the nice guys? And most of the people were concluding that the nice guys are not attractive. Uh, People want risk-taking, people who are rough and tough, you know, and all of that. Now, whether this is the men, it's men say, saying this, uh, and some of them are saying, well, I'd rather stay a nice guy and not get women. But the idea that they had, and it may be we have to ask ourselves, what is attractive to women? Are they encouraging uh, men to be gentle and all of this? You see, I did a lot of work on Chief Lutuli, you probably remember, and mm-hmm. what was nice about Lutuli is he was – a powerful human being, but he was also gentle. You know, there is this picture of him with a little puppy under his chin. And that to me was an example of his gentleness. And Mandela used to be a boxer, but in his and that also connotes being tough. But in his later life, you see him with babies and things like this, uh, soften so that we have to find, we have to advance a model of masculinity where you're not a sissy if you're not t- tough, that you admire people who are gentle and kind and care for others. And we haven't really got that across. <laughs> Professor, you also refer to the way in which national liberation movements, including the ruling African National Congress, depicts themselves as having a potentially negative impact on human rights. Please explain. The word national has been taken to belong to leading liberation movements, ANC or ZANU and SAPU, ANC and PAC, uh, SWAPO and so forth. And they were declared to be the sole authentic representatives of the people. And the problem with this becomes, first of all, that... um, Long before you have an election, the liberation movement starts to advance the idea that it alone can represent the people. You don't really need elections. The elections merely confirm what you already know. And then, if that's the case, one can also ask oneself, do you really need elections? And that may be one of the reasons why They rig elections in Zimbabwe and things just carry on afterwards. And a South African delegation went to that, to one of those, those elections and said it was free and fair. Um, even though there was rigging when Tangvarai lost the election, but the voting observers said it was rigged. So that's one thing. The other thing about if you say that the liberation movement embodies the national, 
It also is anti-pluralist. In other words, it's not conducive to other voices emerging and being part of public debate. It's also a bit intolerant of identities other than the national. In other words, if someone says, I come from Tsonga stock, uh, people are not very tolerant. Tsonga and Shangane, you know, there's a lot of people who are contemptuous of that or of people, Mfengu people amongst the easy closer speaking people. Uh, and I think that also comes from the idea of a general, uh, it's, it's sometimes referred to, if someone says, I'm, I'm proud to come from, from that stock, people say that's ethnic chauvinism or tribalism. But I mean, you are entitled to be proud of your language and culture and all of this. But I mean, I'm not suggesting we must romanticize uh, one's historical culture. One must engage it because you have practices like Ugu Twala that was, uh, pass, was inherited where a woman is abducted and more or less raped and forced into a marriage. So you can't just say, okay, we respect cultures and customs without engaging again with them. And lastly, Professor, you argue now that it is wrong to focus on isolated individuals for the realization of human rights. Why is this uh, when many declarations uh, refer to the rights of individuals? You know, the rights of individuals are not against at all, but I think it's part of a particular period and it's also associated with liberalism, which believes in equality, but that equality is abstract. In other words, it is not in relationship to other people. Now, if you are in a relationship that is unequal, it's very hard to realize your freedom. Uh, like in a household, if uh, the man does nothing and the woman is expected to do everything in the household, uh, that relationship, you can't ignore that relationship when you say that women must get involved in public life. If the woman is not allowed to go out and work, her only job is to look after the children, clean the house, um, her freedom is not realized only as an individual. It's dependent of a, on a relationship with the husband, but also it is in relation to uh, other human beings who you encounter in going about your life. For example, if you are in parts of South Africa where there are gangs, and you say the, the the roads are you're free to walk on the roads. You're not free to walk on the roads because there may be a bullet just going going across there between gangs. So that you exist in relationship with other individuals. No person is an island. But you yeah. see a lot of the human rights declarations in history, they used to say the the French Declaration has the rights of man which we would now say all human beings, but as individuals were, and they were breaking with feudalism because feudalism was based on relationships, but they were relationships that could never be altered. We have relationships between people, and if they are unequal, we must try to alter them to make them enhance the equality between all human beings. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Krima Media's Polity, reviewing his latest column titled Barriers Obstructing Realization of Human Rights, Respecting and Advancing Human Rights.